James Watson, legendary scientist, problematic human, and outspoken atheist. You may be aware of his co-discovery of the structure of DNA, but what you may not know is that each day as he worked on that problem, as he went into his office, he was confronted by the words of God, placed there by an other eminent James, legendary scientist James Clerk Maxwell. Steve Meyer shares the story with us. Chaos Theory. Theory. We're standing in front of the old Cavendish Laboratory. It was commissioned in the 1870s by James Clerk Maxwell, the famous Scottish theoretical physicist. In the history of physics, it's hard to establish uh, firm rankings, but very typically people will think of Einstein, Newton, and Maxwell as the three great physicists of all time. Einstein himself said he stood on the shoulders of, of the giants, uh, in particular Maxwell, who was his, his hero. Um, and Maxwell was a devout Scottish Presbyterian. He died at a young age of uh, 49, having developed all of the key equations of electromagnetism in which basically the modern world depends. Uh, and his, uh, he insisted upon the opening of the Cavendish that there would be a psalm that captured the spirit of the, center, uh, the scientific enterprise inscribed on the, the great wooden door. And you can see here, the doors are open right now and it's a little hard to see maybe in the dark, but it, uh, in the Latin it says magna opera uh, domine exquisita in omnes, on the other side, in omnes voluntates ehus. This is a psalm uh, from uh, it's Psalm 111.2. Great are the works of the Lord, sought out by all who take pleasure therein. There's a very famous book about the history of science called For the Glory of God, written by Rodney Stark, published with Princeton University Press, which captures this idea that the early scientists, the scientists during the period that many historians call the scientific revolution, uh, were, were studying nature as a kind of theological project. They wanted to give glory to the Creator by revealing to the world the underlying principles and design of the world. And so they were taking great pleasure therein. And uh, this is captured in the psalm that, that Maxwell had inscribed on the door. I think it's particularly fitting because if you look just to, to my left, to, to the right here, through the windows, we're looking into a, a part of the Cavendish Laboratory, which in 1952 and 1953 was used by none other than James Watson and Francis Crick as they were trying to model the structure of the DNA molecule. And as I mentioned in a previous video, they gathered data from a lot of sources and then attempted to use the data they had to put together a, a model of the DNA that would account for all of the data. They actually had the machinists in the laboratory build little model chemical subunits, the sugars, the phosphates, the nucleotide bases, and began to fit them together in various ways until finally they clicked into place. And one day, Crick looking at the model, the twisted double helical model of the DNA with the, the, the rungs made of the, the nucleotide bases across from that famous sugar phosphate backbone, Crick said, it's so beautiful, it's gotta be right. And so I think that's quite fitting when you think that under the, the, uh, the door of the Cavendish, or as they walked under the door of the Cavendish every day, there was this motto from the Psalms, great are the works of the Lord, sought out by all who take pleasure therein. They didn't take much pleasure in him, but they still discovered his great works. Great scientists of the past, men like Maxwell and Newton, did take pleasure in both him and his works. They took pleasure in the works that they were elucidating in their in their scientific research. And uh, in, in a way, Maxwell put a stamp on that years before saying that all these great things that we're discovering in science are a reflection of the intelligence and the wisdom of the Creator. Theos Theory.